Hey guys, in this video, we're gonna talk about how to put a property under contract. And we're gonna do it in 15 minutes or less. Additionally, we're gonna talk about the simple steps that you need to take to put a property under contract, what paperwork to use, how to use that paperwork, and how to put a property under contract. From start to finish, step by step, we're gonna do it all in this video, and we're gonna do it under 15 minutes. So I essentially was, I was doing a, uh, a webinar last night and I had some technical difficulties. So this is gonna be using the same slides as that webinar. And instead of redoing the webinar, I'm just gonna record a quick video for you guys. We're even gonna do it in a shorter amount of time. If you stick around till the very end, I'm gonna give you a copy of the contract that I use and that I've used to buy over 500 properties. So let's jump on in guys. This is about how to put a property under contract and that's what we're going to cover in this video. Okay, a little bit about me. My name is David Dodge. I've been investing in real estate for about 18 years. I've been full-time at the game for eight. I've done about 1,000 transactions, 700-plus wholesales, 200-plus burrs. I love real estate investing, and I love to help other people learn about it and to teach them about how easy it is to invest in real estate. So that's a little bit about me. Let's keep it moving. There are six simple steps to putting a property under contract. We're going to keep this very, very simple. Number one, find a motivated seller. Number two, do due diligence on the property. Number three, make a verbal offer and negotiate. Number four, send a written offer. And really number three and number four could be combined, but I separate them for a reason and we'll get to that in a minute. Number four will be to send the written offer. Number five would be to then get signatures on that offer. And number six would be to close the deal, assign it, or double close that particular deal. So let's jump into each of these steps and talk about them in more detail. But before we do, mindset is everything, guys. I just want to touch on this for just a second, right? If you are going to be putting a property under contract, before you do so, you want to think about a couple of quick things here. Number one, you should be trying to help the seller, right? Ideally, you're going to be buying this property or you are going to be flipping this property via wholesale or maybe you're even going to you know, take it and put it into your portfolio of rentals. Regardless, you should have the mindset of trying to help. And if you do that, it will eliminate a lot of your fears, right? Yes, of course, we're trying to make a profit if we're going to flip it or wholesale it. Of course, even if we buy it to hold it or to fix and flip it, we're going to be making a profit. That goes without saying. But, in, but at the end of the day, we really just want to try to help a seller out as well. So have that mindset. It's going to re reduce and remove a lot of fear that you may have about this process. Number two, you have outs in your contracts. They're called CYA clauses. And we're going to get into those when we talk about the contract here in a minute. But you are not obligated to buy when you put a property under contract. Essentially, you have the right to. But there's CYA clauses that allow you to get out of it and they get let, allow you to get out of it and not have to have any liability on that, all right? So again, we are trying to help though. We're not just gonna put properties under contract to get out of them. The goal is just to buy them and flip them and to wholesale them and make money off of them and to help people at the same time, okay? But in the event that we do have to get out for whatever reason, we can. Number three, if you don't have inventory, you can't sell deals. So the reason I bring this up is, is if you are brand new, the way to make money in real estate is to sell real estate or to rent real estate out. And the way to sell real estate is to either own it already or to have it, have it under contract. So you have control of it. So you can't make money if you don't sell something or rent it out, right? So by putting a property under contract, it allows you to have something to sell. So that's very, very important. So you got to have something to sell to make money. You're trying to help and you're not obligated to buy essentially because of the CYA clauses that we use in our contracts. All right, we're making good time. Let's keep it rocking. Number one, find motivated sellers. You gotta find motivated sellers. Ideally, they're motivated. They don't have to be if you're just trying to put a property under contract. But if they're motivated, you're, you're gonna be able to get a better deal and a discount, and you're really gonna be able to truly help them by buying this property. So number one, find a seller, ideally motivated, all right? Number two, do your due diligence. And this really just means that you're gonna determine a fair offer price by looking at the comps and the repairs on the property. So after you find the seller, you need to go meet that seller or get on the phone with that seller and learn about that property. Find out why they're selling. Find out how much work that property needs. We're gonna run comps by just basically looking at other sold properties in the area. 
and we're going to look at the amount of cost that it's going to take us to get our property that we're looking at similar to these other sold comps. All right. That's basically what the due diligence is. We're looking at the market and we're looking at the condition. Don't overthink it. So that's step number two. And we'll get into that more in, in that right now, actually. So the MAO is the max allowable offer. So how are we going to basically, you know, do this due diligence? Here's how. We're going to basically try to find out what a good offer would be. And we're going to start by determining, you know, what that would be by, by finding out the ARV or the after repair value. All right. So the ARV is the after repair value. We do so by checking the comps. All right. We're going to then multiply that by approximately 75%. You know, that, that number can go down a little or up a little, but 75% is a great place to start. And then we're going to subtract out the repairs. And if we're wholesaling it, we're going to take the wholesale fee out as well. All right. So we're basically solving for max allowable offer. But here's the thing. That is the max that we're going to be willing to pay. And I have a bunch of videos on MAO and how to determine your MAO. So basically, let's say that the comps are showing us a property at, you know, a bunch of properties that have sold recently at about 100,000. That's what we're going to say that our after repair value is. We're going to multiply that by 0.75. Reason is, is we want to typically make about 15% and the cost to sell a property is about 10%. So if you multiply it by 0.75, and you're flipping the property, you can make about 15% on your investment after the 10% cost to sell. And then what we're going to do is we're going to look at our subject property and we're going to say, all right, how much does it cost to get our property to look like these comps that sold for 100? So 100 times 0.75 gets you 75. And let's say that our property needs $25,000 worth of work. Well, 75 minus 25 is going to put us at 50. And if we're wholesaling it, we're going to take another five or 10,000 off. So now we're down to 40,000. Well, guess what? Our MAO is 40,000. We've solved for that, but we're not going to offer 40,000 because we've solved for the max allowable offer, the most that we can pay. So we'll get to back to that in a minute, but this is how you do your due diligence. You use a simple, simple formula. It's called the MAO formula. All right. Number three, step number three, we are going to offer to purchase the property from them. So we're going to make them an offer and we're going to negotiate with them. And the reason we use the MAO formula is because we need to know what the most we can pay is. And then we're going to offer a little less. The reason we want to offer a little less is because if we go in with the best offer that we have right out of the gate, we don't have any wiggle room to come up. So we want to come in five or $10,000 less than our MAO. So let's go back here. We had 100,000 ARV times 0.75 gives us 75,000 minus the 25,000 in repairs. Puts us down to 50,000. And let's assume that we're wholesaling on this and we want to make 5,000 in this case. So that puts us down to $45,000. So our MAO in this scenario is $45,000. Okay. What I'm going to do is I'm going to essentially offer them 35, 37, $38,000, something like that, because it's less than the 45,000. And if they bite on that number, then I've just got an even better deal. But if they don't bite, I'm going to need to negotiate with them. And by not coming in with the best offer out the gate and being able to negotiate with them, I now have wiggle room to come up. So every time I talk to them every couple days, weeks, months, as I'm following up, I can offer to pay them a little more each time, but I don't ever want to lead with my MAO. And then last but not least, we're going to follow up like crazy if they don't like the number and our negotiating isn't really working, right? That's it though. You got to make the offer. Making the offer is super, super important. And I typically do this verbally because then I get to kind of see how they respond. If they, you know, if they don't like that at all, I can see it. They hang up. I get it. If they're, you know, not hating that number, well, then I'm in the ballpark. All right. Step number four, we're going to send them a contract to purchase and that's going to be in writing. So we're going to send it to them or we're going to have that in our car. We're going to print it out. We're going to bring it with us. All right. We use a simple one page contract and we're going to jump into that next. Get the signatures of step five and then deliver it to a title company. So you have to execute these contracts, get them over to a title company or a closing attorney. Next step number six, we're going to assign double close or we're actually going to buy the deal. So once we get, find the seller and I think that's next, find the seller, we're going to do our due diligence. We're going to make a verbal offer, negotiate, maybe follow up as needed if we need to send that written offer, get those signatures, and then we're going to actually go close that deal. We can do it by assigning it 
We can do it by double closing it. We can do it by actually buying the deal ourselves. All right, but we have to follow up with the seller, make sure the title company knows what's going on, make sure everybody aligns, same date, same time. Show up if you are buying it and you're, you know, you need to have the money. If you're double closing or assign it, you need to make sure your investor is coming with you or will be there to close on that deal. So that's a quick recap, guys. Six simple steps. Find a seller. Do the due diligence on the property. Make an offer and negotiate. Maybe follow up. Send it in writing or have it have a contract nearby that you can fill out, get the signatures, and then close it, assign it, or double close. So let's take a look at this purchase contract. And I have that here. And I am going to read this really quickly because this is a simple contract that I love to use. And I've used this contract over 500 times. So this is a, stand, a standard contract to purchase real estate. This contract is going to be dated. You put your date there in which the buyer, you put your name or your entity here. Okay. Next is offers to purchase from the seller. And we're going to put the seller's name or entity right there. The following described real estate. We are going to basically put the address right here. All the improvements there and all opportunity. I can't say that word ever. <laughs> Appertunes rights located at and then the address goes there. Keep it simple. Next, the consideration of the sum of. We're going to put the amount of earnest money due upon completion of the inspection period right here. And then next, the purchase price is to be. And we're going to put the price right here. So maybe we do $10 or $100 right here. You don't need to go crazy and go overboard with your earnest money. And then your purchase price is going to go right here. So in that example that we just used, we had a MAO of 45 and... I was going to offer 37, 38,000. Well, let's say that the seller said, hey, we'll do it for 40,000. Well, very simply, what we would do is we would put maybe $100 or even $10 with the earnest money right here. And then we would put the $40,000 right here on this line. All right. So there's a couple other things in this contract, but it's pretty straightforward. It's very, very simple. It's one page as you can see here. So let's read through this. Number two, the conditions. And there's going to be a few conditions. It's going to be sold as is with no warranties made by the seller, but the seller will make the buyer aware of any known facts that affect the value of the property. And B, seller and tenant, if any, will make the property accessible to show the partners, lenders, inspectors, appraisers, and contractors prior to closing. This gives you the ability to access it and any and all of your people, your partners, your, your cash buyers, right? It's going to allow you to get them in and view the property. C, if the buyer is unable to complete the purchase for any reason, the earnest money deposit shall be forfeited to the seller as total liquid damages and the buyer is released from any further obligation under this contract. Check this out. This is really cool because up here in the consideration of the sum of the earnest money, it's due upon completion of the inspection period. Seller agrees to, right? The very top are there above number one. It's due upon the completion of the inspection period. So you don't even have to put the earnest money down until later and number or letter C here says, if you're unable to complete the purchase for any reason, the earnest money deposit shall be forfeited to the seller. And that's as total liquid damages and buyer is going to be released from any further obligation under this contract. So this is a CYA clause in here that's going to cover your butt because if you can't close for any reason, then you just lose your hundred bucks or your $10. You're not obligated to buy per se. Next would be D. The seller cannot provide a clear title or doesn't allow proper inspection of the property. Well, then the buyer will be released from any further obligation as well. And the seller promises to sell under this contract. Number E, or letter E, buyer shall select the closing agent. You're just going to put in the title company right here. And the closing will be held in the county where the property is located. You can change that as needed as well. This purchase contract is assignable as letter F right here. Very, very basic. Guys, we're almost done. we got about a minute left. G, contract, to sub contract is or contract to sub is subject to partner's approval. There's a typo right there. I can fix that here. Contract is subject to partner's approval and verification of taxes, title, and value. I really like this because this is a great CYA clause because your partner can be anybody, right? It could be your partner, could be your spouse, could be a cash buyer, could be a lender, could be anybody, right? So it's really broad that we say that the... Where are we at here? I'm, I'm losing myself. G, 
Contract is subject to partner's approval. Well, that's really great. And also verification of taxes, title, and value is awesome because you can determine the taxes, you can determine the title, but the value is kind of subjective. So if you don't see value for any reason, you can get out. All right, three, we're almost done. Taxes to be prorated and previous year's taxes to be paid by seller. All attorney closing fees and customary closing costs shall be paid. There's only really three things you can put here. You can put it by the seller, by the buyer, or each party respectively. That's number th or that's letter or number three. Number four, closing date shall be on or before. Put the number of days before the date and or the date right there. And then the seller will grant an extension needed to clear the title or to complete closing documentation if needed. Title to the above described real estate will be conveyed by general warranty deed or in another customary instrument of transfer. The title is to be free and clear and unencumbered, free of any county, city, and federal liens. All liens against the property shall be paid at closing by the seller. Pretty straightforward, guys. This offer, when accepted, com compromise, or comprises the entire agreement of purchase and seller. And it is agreed that no represent representations have been made. And then last but not least is your additional terms and conditions. Very, very, very basic. So guys, you can find this contract over at discountpropertyinvestor.com. It's a free download. You can download a PDF version. You can download a Word doc version. And you can go use this and edit and modify as you see fit. It is very, very, very basic and very, very straightforward. Guys, we did this in about 16 minutes. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you learned something. I do want to talk about really quickly a new program that I'm going to be launching here in the next day or two, and it's called Start Flipping Deals. And this is going to be a program that we're going to be offering for $100 a month. And it's going to give you guys access to some of my courses on wholesaling, deal finding, marketing. We're going to have a private Facebook community group for everybody to connect and ask their questions. And I'm even going to be offering some coaching calls within this group, uh, probably about every other week for maybe an hour or two, maybe even a little bit longer, but it's going to be brand new. And I'm going to be launching this probably this afternoon or um, over the weekend here. So I'm really looking forward to this new group. I really want to try to help as many people as I can. And I know by bringing the price point down, that means a lot more people will be able to you know, take advantage of this education, of this training. So guys, I hope that you have enjoyed this video. There'll be a link below the video if you want to learn more about our new Start Flipping Deals program. And I hope you guys learned a thing or two in this simple, quick little video. It was going to be a webinar, but we made it into a video um, about how to put a property under contract. Keep it simple. Don't overcomplicate it. There's six simple steps and you can get a copy of this contract over at discountpropertyinvestor.com. Go check it out. It's in the resources area. And uh, thanks for watching, guys. We'll do some more of these soon. Signing off.